What does humility look like to you? For the purpose of this video, I will break down the three types of humility that I wrote down. The ceremonial humility, the conditional humility, and the true humility. If you would love to listen to these, I would like you to lock in and stay on. I am OM Akpan. This is my YouTube channel. I would like you to hit the subscribe button if you are yet to subscribe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome if it is your first time watching. Next Sunday is my birthday and the only birthday gift I want from you is to subscribe to this channel and share the videos that I make on this channel. So thank you for watching. First of all, the ceremonial humility is a pretentious kind of humility whereby you can put up the act like you are humble when it is just a pretense. You can walk the way people suppose is a way that humble people walk. You can talk in a way that people suppose that humble, humble people talk this way. You can act in a way that people suppose that humble people act this way, but that is not who you really are. And secondly, the conditional humility is a kind of humility that is based on the situation or the condition of a person. For example, someone that is not financially buoyant and wealthy can act very humble while they are poor. And then, People will suppose that this person is humble because they do not have much, because they are poor. Now, when they get to have a lot, their pride starts showing up. They start oppressing others. People that were once kind of being oppressed and were pitied are now the ones who take up the lead in oppressing other people. Now, this is a conditional kind of humility that while the person is down, they act like they are humble. But the true humility is the kind of humility that Christ Jesus calls us to. So that it is not based on your condition, neither is it a ceremonial act that you put up when you go outside or when you meet people, so that they will, in quotes, give you a reputation, a humble person. But as Christians and people who are called to follow Christ, we are to become like Him. The goal of walking with Christ is to look like Him, walk like Him, talk like Him, become like him that is the goal of you and i following christ which means we should be humble like jesus christ paul in philippians had to bring us to the awareness let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus and he said that jesus did not count himself to be god even though he is god but he did not see himself okay let me you know act like i'm equal to god but when he found himself in fashion like man he humbled himself obeyed the Father. In every step that he took, he was looking up to the Father. He was pointing to the Father. Never in any time did he point to himself. But he was always pointing people to the Father. Because what you have to know is that pride is you pointing to yourself, trying to exalt yourself. And in the whole of Scripture, you realize that Scripture tells you, don't try to exalt yourself. Don't try to push yourself up in pride to make yourself look like you're better than every other person because you don't need to do that that doesn't mean suppress yourself that doesn't mean that you demean yourself that doesn't mean that you are not proud of yourself but it means in relation to other people you know you know your qualities you know your capabilities but you don't have to shout it out to people and boast on it and scripture also did not say that you should not boast but it tells you, if you want to boast, boast in the Lord. He that wants to boast should boast in the Lord. Which means God has graced you with everything that you have right now. God has graced you with all the gifts that you have right now. And all you get to do is to boast in Him. That everything I have and everything I am, by the grace of God, I am who I am. Paul said so. And he said that I have labored. More than all the other apostles. That's a kind of boast. But it's not I. It is the grace of God that is in me. Boast in the Lord. God is the one that brought me to this place. God is the one that elevated me. God is the one that raised me up. It is not my intelligence. It is not my hard work. I work hard, but not the hard work. The other part to this is what I want to tell you that humility is not an emotional response. But it is your heart response to God, which is through his word that shows up in the way you act, which is, it is true meekness, strength under control, patience and true compassion for all other people and honoring people. It is not for you to operate in self-degradation, which is start talking down on yourself. Oh no, I don't, I, I'm not this, I'm not that, you know, 
I'm not even intelligent. I don't know if people say that anyways, but whatever way that you talk yourself down is not humility. You could be deceived to think it is. It is not humility. If you try to disqualify yourself when you have a capability, if you were asked, it is not humility. The problem is that some people who operate in pride go to other people to go tell them who they are to look good and look better than them. But you, if somebody comes to you to inquire of your capability, you can humbly state it and letting the person know all of this yeah, is by the grace of God. It's not you because you have a tendency to be proud. But then because you are so afraid of being proud and arrogant of operating in pride, we now find Christians who operate in fear and cowardice. They don't have confidence. So this is not humility. Lack of confidence is not humility. You looking for validation is not humility. And all other acts of fear and cowardice. Paul said to Timothy, God did not give you the spirit of fear. God did not give you the spirit to become a coward. Yes, you don't want to act in pride. Yes, you don't want to be arrogant. But then God did not say that you should put yourself down and live in fear. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. God did not give you a spirit of timidity because humility is not timidity. Humility does not mean humiliation, which is you allowing other people to humiliate you to talk down on you and you never speak up for yourself. Because sometimes you might feel like as Christians, I know you have to be led by the Spirit of God. It is not all the times that people attack you that you have to respond to them. Because even if you have to respond, you have to respond in love. Even if you have to respond, you don't react, you respond. If you are responding, it should be in love. It should not be a reaction that they wanted to get from you that you give to them. They were talking to you to get you angry and now you got angry and start saying things you're, you're not supposed to say. Now that is not you being humble. Being humble doesn't mean you are to be walked upon. Allow everybody to use you and take advantage of you. That is not humility. Humility is knowing who you are and walking in who you are. Knowing the confidence you have and walking in that confidence. People respect that. Knowing that you are not given the spirit of fear and timidity and you're not timid. You are bold. Be careful because in our world, when you are bold and confident, people feel like you are proudful. But as a Christian, you don't have to accept and believe that. Being bold is a gift that your father gave you because you carry his spirit. His spirit is the spirit of boldness, not of fear, not of timidity. So which means you can walk into a room with full courage to do things that other people are afraid to do. Now let's talk about David for a bit. David. Being filled with the Spirit of God after being anointed, went to the battlefield to deliver food to his brothers. And all his brothers and all the king, which is King Saul in First Samuel chapter 17, all of them were running away from Goliath. You know this story very well. But then there is a part to this story that is not always said, which is David's elder brother, Eliab, went to David. After hearing David making inquiry, what would be given to the man that kills this giant? And then they were telling him, those things, his brother went to him and started chiding him. What are you doing here? Like, aren't you supposed to be looking at those little few ships? Who are you leaving them for? But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? He demanded. What about those few ship you're supposed to be taking care of? Now, he presupposed that that's all he's supposed to do all his life. And this is where I say humility is not humiliation. Where people give you a place that you're supposed to be and say that that's where you belong. You don't belong in that low place. He went ahead to say, I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. This is just a pure assumption. And David just responded to him, what have I done wrong? And he ignored him because that is not important to him. But this is example of what would happen to you if you are working in courage confidence and boldness people will come and attack you that you're being prideful that you are full of pride because i know your pride look at what heli have said to his younger brother and this might have been as a result of insecurity also because when samuel went to their home to anoint 
he thought it would be him, he's the oldest, that he was the anointed one, but none of them, but the youngest one who was in the bush, taking care of those few little sheep. So God's way, God takes the little things to confound the big and the mighty. And you have to understand, that is why scripture says that when you humble yourself under the mighty hands of God, God will lift you up. When you do not try to prove your importance to people, God will raise you up. When you do not try to act like you are better than everybody else, you are really humble. You are not pretending in a ceremonial way, acting humble, because you are doing to people, you've gotten your reward. People lift you and be like, oh, he's a very humble person. You are not acting because it is a condition that you don't have, and then you are humble, because you can't oppress anybody, since everybody would oppress you because you have nothing. That is not why you are humble, but you are humble because you are truly meek. And you truly have the nature of God, the nature of Christ, which is once you're compassionate to people, you are kind, you are patient, humility comes as a result. Humility just comes as a fruit of you living in the fruit of the Spirit. It is one of it, gentleness, meekness. It is a fruit of the Spirit, which is the more you align with God, the more this fruit wells up in you, rivers of living water. It's not just in speaking of tongues. It's in living the life that your life is flowing with the fruit of the Spirit of the Lord. And this is for you to know, humility is not what had been portrayed over time. Humility is not about dressing in a particular way and looking very humble, bowing your head down, oh, so that people will be like, oh, this brother is very humble. Humility is not walking in some kind of gentle steps so that people will be like, wow, this brother is so humble brother or humble sister. Humility is not dressing in a not so fashionable clothes, maybe clothes with less quality. Humility is not all of that that we portray it to be. If you have the money to look good, look good. If you have the money to take care of yourself, take care of yourself because you need to. Even if you don't have the money, still take care of yourself. You don't have to wear glamorous and extravagant things to look good. But then humility doesn't mean don't look good. When you dress, put on dresses that do not complement the body that God gave you. You are slim and you are wearing a very big cloth that overwhelms you and it looks like the cloth is wearing you. You are not humble. That might just be a pretense or maybe a wrong mindset up here. But you can dress the little dress you have. You can put it on and look good and then glorify God. You may not have much, but you are honoring God and you are respecting people. Because that is, that is what it is. And if you have the money to buy quality dress to wear and buy quality shoes, it doesn't mean that you have pride unless you truly do. Unless you are doing it to impress people. But if you do it because you love, you love quality and you can afford it, you're not pretending, then there is nothing wrong with that. I know some people will come against this and be like, but that's not the aim. That's not, you can use the money to feed the poor. The lady came to Jesus, poured a alabaster jar of oil on Jesus. Judas said the same thing. This oil would have been sold and the money used to feed the poor. Jesus said, you always have the poor with you. This is for me. So if you can take care of yourself and you are still kind and compassionate to people because that doesn't mean you are taking care of yourself. Don't take care of others. Don't help others. Don't be kind. No. I already mentioned humility is the flow of the fruit of the Spirit. So you have to know that all these other things the only thing that is important about the way you look, the way you dress, is modesty. Scripture advises you to be modest, and being modest is humility, which is being modest has been interpreted wrongly in our culture, the church culture in particular. So you have to get it straight that looking good is also modesty. Putting on dresses that complement your body is also modesty. It is not in wearing oversized. It is not in wearing low quality stuffs that you say, oh, Humble brother, look at, he's a very rich man, but look at how he dresses. So cheap clothes, maybe he's stingy. I really hope that this video is helpful and that it's going to set someone free. But you have to know what humility is not and know what it is. So that you walk in power and not walk in fear. So that you walk in confidence and not walk in fear. Being courageous and being confident is humility. Knowing who you are and walking in who you are is humility. And that was how Jesus walked. Let this man be in you. It was in Christ Jesus. He knew who he was. He's the son of God. And when he would declare that he is the son of God, the Pharisees would attack him. And be like, man, you are blaspheming. How are you the son of God? We know your father Joseph. But he truly is the son of God. 
But they did not believe him. But that did not stop him from believing and knowing who he was. So this is to tell you that he's afraid of showing who you are to the world because you don't want people to be insecure about you because you don't want people, you know, maybe to doubt and disbelieve you and say that it's not true. Leave your gift. Paul told Timothy, don't let no man despise your youth, but leave as an example that even as a young person that is following God and loving God, you can be modest. You can be an example to other people. My final word is you understanding that humility is not pretense. Like I said earlier in the beginning, it is actually living real, honest, and authentic life. Knowing that I have to be who I am. Now, in the story in Luke 18, sometimes has been preached to look like if you are someone that goes to God in prayer, like the prayer of the publican that Jesus said he was humble, that you have to go to God in a way like that publican went to Christ and he was like, oh, I am a sinner. I do not deserve you. And he couldn't even look up to heaven. If you are being told that that is the way to pray as a humble person, I would beg to defer. You have to study to understand scripture and rightly divide the word. Now, two people went to pray. Jesus was giving an example of a self-righteous person. The Pharisee was self-righteous. He said he deserves all the good thing that has come to him. He deserves to be in God's presence and all of that, not knowing that himself is a sinner also. So he's now like, I'm not like this republic and comparing himself like some Christians do. I'm not a sinner like that prostitute. I'm not a sinner like this other person. But you're still a sinner because you have hidden sins. You have hidden struggles. That means you're not perfect. And none of us are, which means we all need Jesus, all of us. All of us need the Lord. All of us need salvation. All of us need to live in redemption. All of us need restoration. So now, this publican went to Jesus and he was real. He was authentic. He said, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. That was being humble. That was the point of the humility. It was not because he talked down on himself. It was not because he said, oh, I don't deserve heaven, I don't deserve anything. Of course, the prodigal son tried to do that. But the father didn't even pay attention to that because it's not about you talking down on you. It's about you being real and authentic. Which means when you go to your father, tell him how you feel. Be real with him, be authentic with him. That is what God requires. That is humility. Coming to God boldly is humility. Receiving the joy of the Lord and living in it is humility. You don't have to live and allow your life to be detected by how other people think it's supposed to be. I would like you to get in the comment section. Let me know what you think about today's video. It will be a pleasure to hear from you. And if you are yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I hope this video is a blessing to you. Thank you so much for watching. See you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.